Good afternoon, Buju. My name is Michael Pierre. My spirit name is Kimangisid Mayanu, Nishnakas. In my language, uh, I'm called Clubfoot Wolf. Other names I have are Buffalo Spirit Man, the one who gets things done and kept by the bears. Nighthawk Warrior Spirit, Kingfisher Clan, and I come from Thunder Bay. I bring greetings to you all from uh, the St. Norbert Art Center today. Um, I am happy to be here to share a little bit of knowledge about uh, um, what we call dream catchers or, or medicine wheels. So uh, we're going to uh, go from this bag of supplies. Um, it'd be good for you to take out all of your um, your components. There's going to be the rings, the sinew, the leather, the feathers, and the uh, crow beads. And we're going to go from these uh, bag to a finished product. So it's something like this. Um, <clears throat> Although this is very decorative, it has some uh, very traditional origins, and I'm going to be talking about some of our cultural beliefs and, and uh, share some stories. So with that in mind, I'm going to start off with a, with a calling in song, just to make sure that I'm, I'm getting that guidance and direction that I need, that uh, I'm speaking in a clear way, and that, you know, with the cameras rolling and things like that, that we're more interested. So if you just bear with me, this song is not. Called the calling in song. Oh, 
So, we're calling these uh, dream catchers. Probably a lot of you are familiar with uh, the story of the dream catcher. There's lots of different versions. And uh, I learned how to make dream catchers like this when I was a, a student at the University of Manitoba. I was sitting in the uh, Access Student Lounge, the Indigenous Student Lounge, and uh, some people came in with all these um, components, these craftsmen. So if you'd like, uh, we're going to show people how to make these dream catchers. And the story that they told us was that it was to put over your bed, over your window where you sleep, and to help you uh, trap the bad dreams, and let the good dreams come through the middle of that, that hole. And I thought, well, that's really pretty. So uh, I learned about it. And uh, I just thought it was very nice. And, and I thought it would make a nice present for somebody. But I wanted to um, get started right away because some of these parts are, are very, um, they, they take some time. And um, I think something really important when you're creating anything, whether it's uh, uh, something like a, a dream catcher or a piece of art or a nice dinner, uh, requires your focus, your, your energy. What you put into something is really, um, what comes out of it you know when we um, take that time and care it's a lot uh, the thing that comes out is much more beautiful and um, the nice thing about these uh, little kits that we put together uh, <clears throat> is that uh, there isn't just one specific way I'm, I'm going to show you just some very basic ways of creating these, but they can be as decorative as ornate as you want to be. It's just some, some common elements. There's something that makes up a, a hoop or circle. Uh, circles in our culture is very important. Uh, today we're using these uh, brass rings and they come in different sizes. Uh, there's, um, you know, for much smaller ones, there's some that are much bigger and uh, when I've made these um, in a more traditional sense, uh, I use a different uh, component. I use uh, red willow, which grows out in, in, uh, in wet areas. So I'll go and grab their rings and, um, and your, your uh, leather strips. It's gonna take us about 20 minutes or so to wrap this ring, into, to make it into a wrapped ring like this. So this is, um, partially finished. I started this one this morning. So take, find one end of your, uh, your leather and tie off a knot on the end. And make sure you leave enough space on the top because we're gonna make a loop, something like this at the top. <laughs> you wanna make a knot that doesn't slip very easily, but uh, no, there isn't a, a one or right way. I think the piece that I really want to emphasize is that this is a, a, a time to be creative. <coughs> okay. So we're gonna take this leather stripping and uh, I said, I've timed it out. It takes about 20 minutes to wrap. Um, it goes quicker when you kind of keep it in this bundle. So, uh, you know, I would suggest if you had something like an elastic, um, to kind of keep it together because uh, otherwise it'll come out and you'll probably see that when I'm making this little, little pop out and it just takes a little more time. Um, again, what I would encourage you is try not to get, uh, or to feel rushed or, or frustrated. Um, for us, we don't believe that there are necessarily mistakes when we are trying to make something. It, um, when we know that we're putting our best efforts into it. It's, it turns out exactly the way it's supposed to. So you just want to hold your first, that first knot, make sure it doesn't sp split, and then start wrapping around the brass ring. And you're going to notice as you go, as you wrap, that your bundle of leather is going to start to twist up. So if you want to keep that, have that smooth texture, you want to be able to always keep an eye on that. And uh, if it starts to twist, just let it, uh, let it untwist a little bit. 
So every every time you go around, you can see that. Yeah. You want to make sure that it's you're kind of pulling the same amount of tension on it, like you're pulling it the same uh, tension all the time. This leather stripping is very strong, but it will break if you pull it too hard. So you'll notice that I'm started and there's no gaps in between. You can't see any of that uh, brass or gold gold ring. And if it does come, you could just uh, you can just slide it over a little bit and keep going. So I encourage everyone to start get that piece going now. When I um, first started making these, again, it was it was sort of meant to be a gift. I didn't always know about our traditional culture. Again, uh, we came from uh, a time when we really didn't know anything about that. It wasn't uh, uh, encouraged or taught in schools. or It wasn't until I was in university I started learning about history and traditional culture and things like that. So, um, but I, I did start learning about who I was and where I came from. And as we were on our journey, me and my family, you know, a lot of amazing things happened. And, but sometimes, you know, there were some hardships and not everyone in my family, actually there were very few people that were um, uh, traditional or, or um, knew a lot about our culture and customs, but there was one uncle that I always called uh, back in Ontario. And at one point, one of my family members was having a really hard time. She was being plagued by some terrible, terrible nightmares, scary things at nighttime. And I phoned my uncle, just asking him if there was something I could do to help. So you see, I'm starting to twist up here. So I just let it, uh, let it unwind a little bit. Try to keep it all together. And if it does come through, just uh, but gather it back up and, and wrap it around. But so every turn, you want to make sure that it's still staying, um, staying flat and not twisting up. So when I phoned my uncle, he, uh, he said, okay, well, you can make a medicine wheel for her and that'll help keep her safe at nighttime. I said, oh, okay, so What's the medicine wheel? He says, well, you're gonna to have to go to the bush and get some uh, red willow and, um, and some sinew. And uh, you're gonna make a hoop out of the red willow. So I, okay, I went to the bush, found out where the red willow was, found a piece that was not too thick and not too small and uh, was flexible. So again, when you, if you're gonna make something more uh, traditional or authentic, I guess it's, um, you know, time of year is also very important to consider. You know, springtime when things start to come alive, they're much more flexible. Uh, so I said, Find a piece of willow, harvest it. And, you know, when you take it from Mother Earth, make sure you give something back. Um, so, and for us in our culture, when we are taking something from the earth, we always give an offering of tobacco or a bit of our hair because we consider hair to be sacred as well. But I gave some tobacco and I harvested a piece of uh, red willow and then I made it into a hoop. And I tied it into that hoop with uh, some sinew, more of a natural colored sinew, kind of like what this one is here. And uh, he said, then I want you to take your sinew, uh, once you've made that hoop, and um, start making a whip. And he said, for us, uh, you know, the number four, the number seven is always very important. And for the thing that I was trying to make to, to keep my family members safe was, uh, um, he said, uh, you make it, you make seven points of contact to that ring. And then you try to go seven uh, rings in. And 
well, as I was making this medicine wheel, I went, holy smokes, I'm actually making what, he, what I was told was a dream catcher. So that's, uh, I made it. And it was very, oh, and the thing that I used instead of uh, the sinew that we're going to use is I used some red yarn. Uh, so again, it was very prescriptive, very descriptive as to what I was making. But it wasn't necessarily decorative. It was very purposeful. But I think when we make these kinds of things, even when they look very pretty like this, they can still have that purpose. When you share the story of the purpose of a medicine or a dream catcher, and uh, you make it either for yourself or for your others, if you're putting that thought or feeling or energy into it, it could work just as well. So you'll see it's taking some time and I'm probably about a third way through. I encourage you to keep doing that. Your hands might get a little sore or stiff. Just, just take a break. Uh, it's important again, not to, to rush, have a drink of water or have some tea. I stopped at 7-Eleven and I made my, got myself a drink because I was, got myself a diet soda, but uh, just focus on wrapping it and making sure that it's not twisted up and that you're pulling at the same tension and that it's all it's all touching. You can see with these uh, <clears throat> kits that we put together, you know, there was some very light colored leather, some reddish brown, and now I'm using blue. Um, the sinew that we're using, again, can be very natural in color, very tan. This one was made out of red. We're going to use some blue. So it's going to be a very blue. Dream catcher. Sorry, I'm not trying to hide it. I'm just trying to gather it back up again. <clears throat> Sometimes it gets a little twisted. So it's important when you're making something like this that you try not to feel rushed. And if you do, maybe it's uh, not the right time to make it. You can. Uh, Set aside about an hour and a half to make one of these. And again, it really depends on how how big your ring is. Also, the width of this leather. So this is very, very fine leather. Um, sometimes you can use wider strips and it'll cover more area of the, of the circle quicker. But again, do we want to do it quick or do we want to do it um, with some care and some, some attention? It's really, really up to you. So I made that um, medicine wheel or dream catcher for my partner and my wife. And, and that first night, no more bad dreams and no bad dreams the next night or the night after that. And I thought, wow, this is really cool. It's working. And uh, I just kept it up, I kept it on the wall. It was, wasn't over the window, it was just over the bed on the, sitting on a tap. And one day I came home and it was off the wall, it was sitting on the bed. I thought, oh, that's weird. Must have been, must have knocked down by accident. So I, I put it back up. I mean, I didn't want to I didn't have any more nightmares, so I put this back up. It had been up for several weeks and she had, had no, no nightmare, no bother at all. And I wanted to make sure it stayed that way. 
next day I came home from work again. And no one's around, right? Everyone's at school or work. And uh, it was on, on the bed again. And I thought, well, that's really weird. Maybe it's kind of scary, but like, what's happening? So I, I put it back up. I checked the, the, the tack. I put a nail up. Or I just made sure that it was really secure. And um, did it again because I was worried that you know, it, it wasn't going to be able to do what it had to do. That is to help my wife have peaceful sleep. And um, third night or third day, I came home and it was on, on the bed, but it had fallen off and then it completely came apart. So remember, I made a hoop out of red willow and tied with sinew. And that sinew is nearly impossible to break. And it, um, it, it completely blew apart. It looked like it had blown apart. And I realized that it wasn't for show and that it had done its work and that it no longer needed to be up. So I said my thank yous and I retired to uh, back to Mother Nature. So, you know, this sinew that we use, it's, it is a synthetic. So it was as close to nature as I, well, um, that I had. And, um, but it had done its work and I, I put it back out onto the land, the sinew and uh, the yarn and the, and the red willow. And uh, put my tobacco on and said, thank you very much. So, you know, when I was told about or asked if there was something I could do, and I, a part of me was a bit hesitant because I, I don't necessarily want uh, our, our ways to be commercialized for someone else. But I was reminded that this was how I learned how to make these things. And although my uncle didn't call them dream catchers, he called them medicine lures. It was uh, it was kind of how I started. So that's why I made it uh, decided to make these, or to show you how to make them. It may be that someday one of you may need to make a a medicine wheel, and you'll have the foundation for this. I've seen some really ornate three dimensional, four dimensional um, dream catchers, and hoops within hoops, and just uh, amazingly like beautiful pieces of what I would call artwork. And um, there's, you know, to have that talent and skill is, that, that's great. And to share that with the world, I think that's awesome too. I'm not that skilled. So again, I'm just showing you something very, very basic to Almost done wrapping. I'm not sure how everyone else is doing, but we're a couple more minutes away. I think, uh, I can't recall what the length was for the leather, but uh, each of the kits, I think, had about four meters of leather. So you're not going to use all four to wrap, we're going to have some excess. So this is the excess that I had from when I wrapped this this morning. I don't know for there, but we're going to use those extra pieces to make some decorative kind of tassels or, or fringes. You can, so for this one, I use two, you can use four or one, it's, it's really up to you. There isn't a, a right way or wrong, wrong way when you're trying to, to make something. A lot of times when I'm creating things, it's like, what am I trying to, uh, what am I trying to do? And you know, how does it, how is it supposed to look? And a lot of times I, I've had to remind myself that yeah, there's not necessarily any mistakes, they're just, Things are meant to be. You know. It's really, I think, 
frustrating when we try to make something absolutely perfect. Because as human beings, we are imperfect. And I think it would be frustrating to always try to do that. And I know some of our indigenous uh, brothers and sisters, when they do a lot of their amazing works of, of art or, or weaving or painting, you know, they sometimes they deliberately make something they put what would, others would call, call a flaw. Again, just to remind us that you know, none of us are perfect and that uh, we're always striving to be our best. And whatever we are that day is, that is our best. And it's not, not to be the best, but to, to do our best, to be the best human being we can, right? And to look after those four parts of who we are as human beings, you know, looking after our physical being, our mental being, our emotional being, and our spiritual being, and however you choose to do that. We're almost done here. Wrapping. I'm going to uh, really just sort of tie it off and then cut it. If uh, you have young people with you today, uh, make sure that you're supervising them when they're using the scissors or, or help them. Uh, I didn't bring scissors, I just brought a little pack of pocket knife, but uh, that'll work. My helper here will make sure I don't cut myself or give me a bandaid if I do. So I've come to the end here, and I'm just going to do one more wrap. Try a bit of a knot. See, it kind of gets twisted up here, so we want to sort of take care of that. So I'm knotting it on the top just so that it doesn't unravel. I'm going to leave a little bit extra on this side. I'm just trying to make this a little bit. So we still have quite a bit left over almost six feet of. They want to match up the length, the two pieces, or go a little bit longer. You want to make them longer. So save your extra leather stripping. You can tie this up here. So there you have it, it's tied off. And if you, if you want to, you can trim off the, the excess, these little bits if you want to, or you might want to keep it longer so that you can untie it. You can make it shorter. I like a little bit of length so that I can make it, make it a bit, um, Shorter if I need for a different time. So I have a sip here of my drink. I'm going to take our uh, sinew and we're going to tie it off again onto the ring. Um, I don't know how fancy or not you can make, but something that won't slip or come undone. Try to do it off maybe a couple of inches, a couple of fingers width away from the, from the top loop. 
this is going to be our first one. And again, we have a lot of um, a lot of CU, so don't worry about if you can't if you leave a little bit extra on the on the top here on the first end. Double that if you want. This one seems that it's pretty secure. So I think we're going to do seven. I've done seven, seems to work. You want to kind of have it the same with um, each contact, kind of the same distance all the way around. You can see here on this one. You know, I started and then seven points. Um, I didn't take a tape measure um, for what I, for me. What I used was uh, just my fingers. I took three fingers and I measured that first contact, okay, and then I measured another three. So that might work for you. Um, you could just use your eyeball. So again, I'm just taking. I'm looking at where I'm at and seeing from the first. So I got to tie it up here. So I'm kind of going to I'm going to go at it from. If I'm looking at this, my sinew is underneath. It's going underneath and then over and through. So I'm looping it around, but I'm, it's going to create a little bite on itself. So once I've kind of measured out where I want it to go, it's about three fingers there. Kind of pull it a bit, make sure it's nice and taut. And that's it, I'm gonna keep going. So I'm gonna, again, sort of eyeball it where I wanna put the next one. Start from underneath the ring, go over the ring and through your, uh, line of seam. So before you pull it tight, make sure that your fingers are, or you've kind of measured out where you want to be. So if you can see that, kind of made three points of contact there now. So again, measuring it out, start from underneath, take it over and through between the ring and your sinew. Maybe that seven times. So before I pull it tight, I want to make sure you good. When you're pulling it, you know, always pull it the same. If you pull it this way or that way, it's not, just try to follow the line of the of the um, of the ring itself. Okay. So about three. So under, over, and through. Make sure your distance is okay. <clears throat> Pull it to the side. This sinew is pretty, pretty tough. It's not gonna break. So I one, two, three, four, five, six, one more. Under. Over and through. Need some background music here. See that one looks a little little shy, but it's okay. I'm going. To because nothing is knotted, you can loosen it a little bit and then make your make it a bit wider and retighten it. I want to confirm I got seven points for my fingers. One, two, three, four, five, six. So I'm missing one actually, that's why. One, two, three, four, five, six. So I'm gonna go back. 
make it a bit smaller. Because I, I can see that this second one wasn't really long. And I think that's where the kind of, it, it kind of got off balance. And that's why we always leave things so that we can readjust. We can see where our mistake is and go back and fix it from that stepping off point. It's the same thing with life. We can, when we want to make a change in our life, it's not that we just jump off and say, oh no, I'm going to be totally different. I made a mistake here and I'm going to uh, never do it again. You got to see. You have to take some time to reflect back <clears throat> your past work and see where, where did I step off. So this is a kind of a, a neat little teaching for all of us. So I've shortened that one. Go back to my next one. I'm just going to shorten up a little bit. Now number six. Longer. Okay. So now we're going to that seventh one. So under over. Tight. <clears throat> and now you're back at the first one. So one more knot under, over, and through. Make sure you tie it over the first part. So then we can just tie this off together. Do one or two. Some people use um, a needle to string through the, the smaller parts. Because when you make small dream catchers like this, uh, when you get close to the center of the web, it's quite small. So uh, I don't have my reading glasses, so we'll see how well I do. Okay, so we have seven points. We're back to the beginning. We're going to take our line of sinew and start going through uh, each of these little rings, or sorry, uh, lines. So our first one here, we're going to, same thing, go. This first one's going to look kind of funny because we have to go through the first bit and then come through to the line that we just made. And before we pull it tight, we kind of want to line it up to the middle, to the middle of this. Kind of right there. It's the middle. And if I go to the next one, we want to find the middle of the second line. So over, under, and through the sinew. Again. 
that nice and tight. And I start to see some triangles. Now, you don't want this to get loose. So what I tend to do is I tend to hold that loop uh, with my index finger and thumb so that whatever's behind is not gonna fall apart. And then use this to go over, under, and through. Kind of line up where I want it to be in the middle. And then pull it back. Not towards you, but again, hold on to mine. So I'm gonna hold this piece now and do the same thing. Over, under, and through. So I lined it up a little bit. And again, it doesn't have to be super perfect, but eyeballing that, that looks pretty good. So again, hold that one, that loop that you just made. So again, okay, this is very repetitious. You can focus on doing that. Next one, over, under, through. I'm trying to be careful to keep my sinew nice and bundled up, but it's, if you're working with it, it tends to, to do that. So here we go. I think I want to move that a bit. More to the there you go. Hold it. Put it through, over, under, and through. So I don't have that nice little bundle anymore, but I can still get it. I'm getting it close to where I want it to be. I'm going to pull it. <clears throat> I start the next line. <clears throat> Go back here to the next So now we're starting the next row. <clears throat> Just carry on. I like to go clockwise. Some people go the other way. Over, under, and through. Hold it. So you're just connecting to the base of your first triangle or your second triangle. So that it's going to be um, because of these beads. These beads are going to be used to hold these these decorative feathers on, but you can also put them in inside your web. So this one I I made, there was no no beading. But for this first one I did, I, I, I strung a bead in it just to give it a different look. So I think I might try that. You want to do it closer to the outside. Because these beads are so big, when you get closer to the middle, it's harder to find the center of that little triangle. So if you're going to do that, it's good to do it kind of, kind of early. So I'm going to do that now. So with my Thumb and index finger, I'm holding this last knot I made. And I'm going to pick a bead, or maybe two. 
So because we got all the blue, maybe I'll pick something with a bit of contrast, maybe a nice red. Maybe two red coming back or yellow. So I've got a couple of beads here. So they're just sitting. I'm going to continue my process of going over, under, and through. Middle. Keep going. Sometimes, if you don't want to stretch your arm out in that, sometimes I'll just take a little loop of it, of the sinew, make a little loop, and get that loop through quicker that. There's all sorts of little tricks and that you learn as you find, a, if your arm gets tired, you, you find a creative ways of getting the same thing done. So again, hold it. Make that little loop. The loop is pretty easy, easy strategy to use when the holes are big. It gets tougher when it's closer to the center. We're getting close to, uh, to those two beads that we put on there. It's going to be time to divide that. So I'm thinking I might put, you can either put them together or you can have them separated. Let's try it separate. So I'm going to put our sinew in between, over, under, and through. There we go. So you still have room to pinch off. And you can keep going as, as deep as, as you wish to go, as you can see. I'm striving to get that seven, the depth of seven. <clears throat> See how we, uh, how far we get in. When you're pretty close to that middle, then it's you'll have enough room for the mix because your little triangles are going to get smaller and smaller. So that's where good eyes or steady hand or your patience comes into play. But again, remember there's there's no mistakes, there's nothing wrong. This is this is your creation. This one is my creation. You see the triangles are getting quite small, but we just continue that pattern. And try to keep the tension on your sinew the same all the way through. Start pulling it too hard, you know, or letting you get too slack. Just be mindful of that. Sometimes you'll see things start to 
pull to one side. Yeah, that's okay. Sometimes it's nice and straight. So we're just following the same pattern over and under and through the bottom of our, our triangles. Kind of makes it a little diamond. We're almost to the center or where we want to make that little hole where we say the good dreams can come through. It's web. So again, this is getting uh, getting interesting. The training was getting really small. Just putting the one end through over under and through. I'm going to have to just use the end now. So through the triangle, under, through our loop. So again, you'll you'll realize when you depending on your attention and where you connected your little knot, that makes the, the shape of those triangles and diamonds different. When I first started learning about our traditions and culture, and I was told by one of my first elders, the teachers, he said, uh, you need to go sit by the fire and wait for those teachings to come. <clears throat> you know, at that point, I was getting all sorts of cool dreams and seeing things and I thought, okay, this is going to make things go really fast now. I can get more teachings and learn more about myself. And so, you know, I'm waiting for the big bolts of lightning and, you know, mighty spirit animals to come and help me. And, and the first night was super quiet. And I was sitting in this little kind of A frame structure. It was a fall in my, um, it's quite windy. So I was sitting inside and, you know, no animals came, it was very quiet. So I'm trying to get through this little triangle here. It's quite, quite getting, it's quite small. So I might be near the end here of my circle, this one. Almost done here. But I, I had a little bench that I was sitting on. And on the bench, right to my right of me, um, was a little spider. And this little spider was sitting there on the bench looking at the fire. I thought, well, that's weird. Why isn't the spider trying to hide from me? That's all I did, because I have to keep this fire from sundown to sunup for four nights. And, and it was time to, when the sun came up and it was time for me to go to bed, I didn't think about this fire anymore. But, um, so we're, we're just at the end here. I'm going to do this last one. So the next night I sat by my fire. Again, no one came. No, no great insights, no 
helper or stories, except a little spider. And that spider sat again with me every night. For those four nights. And on the fourth night, I said, well, what, what is the teaching here? Because the spider's the only one that came. And this thought came to my mind, and it was, well, how does this spider live? I said, well, the spider makes a web and waits for its food to come on. Aha. So that's what I was being taught. The spider was teaching me patience. Try not to rush. Don't expect everything all at once. So I found the, that's the teaching for, for, from that spider that taught me. I got to the middle. Now we can either tie it off here or we can tie it off onto the outside. I like to tie it off to the outside. So what I'm simply doing is I'm just making my way just loosely following a line of uh, the web and tying my way back out. So, again, there's never any big knots until we're at the end. So, just finding a line. So, it kind of creates a thicker line. So, I've started back out. I'm holding it with my thumb. And index finger going through these bigger ones. It doesn't have to be curved back out over under in. and coming out there. And the reason why I do it is so I got one more to do. And I ended up at the, the beginning. So I'm back at the beginning here. I'm outside. I want to tie it off. But this sinew is very waxy, it's very, um, very slender. So if you can't tie knots very well, it's really. Uh, so I'm going to make a little knot on the end. You can either make a knot on yourself or on that first piece. Some tie knots like that. But the neat trick is, so I've knotted it, but I don't want it to come undone. So what you can do is you can burn it, melt it together. So I'm gonna cut off this excess. So from all that sinew, this is all we have left for two feet. Cut off the extra with your scissors or your pocket knife. Very carefully, again, I wouldn't encourage young people to do this piece, but we're gonna hold all these kind of close together, these uh, two ends, and we're going to melt it together. I'm going to add it. And you have to be very careful. So you'll see how quickly it's going to kind of melt in on itself. So it's just touching it. Let it cool, then it hardens, and it won't. They won't slip in. I do the same to this. Cut off that extra piece, and I'm going to melt that. You have to be really careful with that because you don't want to burn all the way through; otherwise, it'll fall all apart. So here we are. So now we can finish this up. I have, um, so like I said, this one I haven't done yet. This one I did two. Now maybe today for this one we can use we can do four. So I'm just taking whatever extra excess 
leather I have. And I'm going to make four. I got two equal lengths. I'm going to just double that. Cut one more time. So now we have four pieces of leather. Again, there's no right way or wrong way. I could just do it with one. Uh, but I think we'll do four. So I'm going to do one. Again, making a little knot. I'm knotting it. So before I pull it tight, maybe I want to make sure that they're equidistance, or maybe I want them to be one to be a bit longer than the other. I want to show you an example of that. So one side I made longer than this one. So your feathers are not all bunched together. It's really, again, a personal choice. So here's two here. I'll put one on the other side for balance. This one is really long, this one's kind of short. I think I want them to be equal. So again, we don't tie everything really super tight until we're sure where we want it to be. So I see where this one is, or my knot is, so I'm gonna go a bit lower because I want it to be equal. Maybe I'll do one more down here. How about that? Do four. Coming, coming to the end. <clears throat> Opposite of the top there. So we've got your decorative feathers. We've got these crow beads. To attach these, it's pretty straightforward. I mean, you feed a bead through one of the ends, and then you can put your feather through through the hole of the bead. So the, the leather and the feathers um, stem kind of holds it together. <coughs> so I feed my feather, my bead through, put my feather through. You can put two feathers, one, Colors for us are pretty important. Colors for lots of cultures I'm going to they don't really have certain energies, vibrations. More here. This is turquoise. You can do as many beads as you want on the, on the sides too. So you have a long stem on your feather like that. Uh, 
it's fine. Maybe you need two beads or three. Put a few beads together there. Sure. If that doesn't. And there we are, my friends. Just made a dream catcher. It's thought this was uh, something that I was going to make as a gift for somebody, and I, um, you know, I would put any. Uh, as we're making them, we put our thoughts, our intentions. So we've gone from something like this. To a finished dream catcher like that. So I encourage you all to have fun with what you do, um, making your your creations. Just uh, remember, take your time, have uh, put good thoughts and energy into it, and it'll come up exactly the way it's supposed to. So I send you all light, love, and prosperity, and uh, hope to see you again. Thank you. Bye-bye.